Hi, my name is Eliza, and I was going to do just a presentation on my laptop screen, but my laptop doesn't want to record anything on the screen, so we're just going to do a normal video today. For my restoration project, I decided to research women from the time of the early restoration and their significance at their time. Starting off, I had Martha Hughes Cannon. For each woman, I wrote a paper about them. She said, let us not waste our talents in the cauldron of modern nothingness. Strive to become women of intellect and endeavor to do some little good while we live in this protracted gloom of life. She was set apart by the prophet of God to become a doctor, and so she did. She was a crusader for change and believed in equality. Her degrees were chemistry from University of Deseret, typesetting, medical degree from University of Michigan, degree in pharmaceuticals from the University of Pennsylvania, and a National School of Elocution and Oratory. She was a senator, doctor, teacher, wife, mother, leader, friend, public speaker, outlaw. She was educated and an advocate. She ran for Senate against her husband, and she won. She served as the first female state senator and the only woman for her four-year term. This is her legacy. Next, we had Elizabeth McKeon. This is my paper for Elizabeth. Elizabeth received a blessing from Lorenzo Snow, and it promised her that thy mind shall be as clear as an angel's when explaining the principles of the gospel. The Lord called Elizabeth to be a missionary in Europe and preach the restored truth. She went from a young woman in Utah to a young woman in Europe. She was blessed with good business fortune, and Elizabeth took her inactive husband and traveled to England, France, and Italy. She originally went to search of her ancestors, but ended up preaching the gospel and telling the truths to all who would listen. She was committed and ready to do whatever it would take for her husband to return to faith and full fellowship. She wanted to save her ancestors and convert those repaired souls. She said, I could have gone into every house. She taught the gospel with such willingness and served hundreds and hundreds and ended up sharing the gospel to so many other minds. She said, our religion teaches us that wife stands shoulder to shoulder with the husband. Next, I had Almina Shepherd Taylor. When she was 16, she knew the truth of the gospel and received her testimony. She also got an errand from the Lord, but that included having to leave her family who rejected her because of the gospel. And she left behind a good job and the life she knew, but she knew her identity and that was she, she was a daughter of God. She knew the truth and said that the Lord blessed her with the testimony of the gospel's truth, which I had never lost. She never lost, lost faith, even after the death of three children, her husband being jailed and imprisoned and faced for prosecution for her faith. She soldiered on. She helped fight for women's rights in the time when many viewed them with suspicion. She joined many women's organizations and taught the women in the church as well. She was the first president of the Young Women's Organization and worked with people like Susan B. Anthony to ensure women can vote. She said, every one of us should be an angel of charity. The next woman I researched was Jane Elizabeth Manning James. Step by step, she walked 800 miles with broken shoes, and she traveled so she could learn the gospel and embrace Christ's restored church. She walked with faith. She was questioned, misunderstood, judged, prosecuted, denied rights, and abused. She overcame hatred, mistrust, and every, and every day the racial bias was around her. She never wavered in her commitment to the Book of Mormon or to her testimony of the Prophet Joseph. From her humble beginnings, she left her home as a refugee from Connecticut to New York, then on to Nauvoo. She walked and was taught by the Prophet Joseph himself. She was baptized, married, and became a mother and a grandmother. She was a pioneer in her trek across the plains that led her to Utah. She lived long and well, was known as a friend to all for 95 years. She said, few people were more noted for faith and faithfulness than was Jane Manning Jones. A very, very faithful woman of her time. And after researching all those women, I actually decided to write a paper about myself. Um, that's me, but who am I? I'm a daughter of heavenly parents. I'm a child of God. I'm faithful and have a deep love of God. I have been blessed, and I intend to be an instrument in the Lord's hands. I want to go on a mission and be endowed with the priesthood. I have many spiritual gifts, and I want to strengthen them and use them as the Lord wants, to bless and serve those around me. Like Jane Manning, I testify that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. Like Martha Cannon, I seek after the education to be better lives of, of myself and others. And like Alimina Taylor, I know the Book of Mormon is true, and I'm so grateful for those women and for the priesthood power that allowed miracles to take place in their lives and in mine. I'm grateful they raised their voices and made clear what they stood for and believed in. I'm grateful for the example they are to me, and hope they can be one for you too. I hope we can all learn from these amazing women and that we can use the priesthood to love, serve, and change the world. Thank you for listening to my restoration project.